Rights to legislating, our officials deviating, constitution liquidating, all the people hesitating, and I don't know what they're waiting for. It's so humiliating, to the crats all calculating, operating, regulating, it's completely nauseating. She had a legal battle on about the farm, and it was a family battle. And what she did was she beat the liquidator. She beat an eviction, and she won the day and kept the farm. But along that route, she learned a lot about the law and our ownership rights. So after she had that success, she couldn't stop her, took on the local council over their environmental planning and you know what rights, what rights we have here. And while she did that, as she was doing it, she found that our ownership rights were under threat. Now, she also discovered of a, learned of a research group that had been operating since 2003, this was 2005, and they'd been studying the constitutions to find out exactly in five states what our rights were. And that's actually a very good way of doing it. You get a, an expert team together with a couple of lawyers, as they had, specialists and so on, and you research a particular subject. And they were doing that. And why they wanted to do that was they wanted to run a couple of high court cases, so they needed to be, in, needed to be informed. But what happened was they couldn't find that the politicians had any power under law to do what they were doing with removing certain rights that we had for our land and so on. And she also found when being invited onto that group that the Queensland Constitution had been changed in 2001. And what happened was that they had removed our rights to ownership under the Constitution of Queensland and also they had decided that um, we just didn't have any Right? This was bizarre. This is, this is absolutely staggering. And I'm sure you would want to see the evidence for this. And that's what Sue Maines is going to give us today. She's going to give us the evidence. The title of her talk is the Queensland Constitution 2001 and its removal of all our ownership rights. Now that's not just land, it's property as well. So she's happy to take uh, questions after her chat and please wait till after the chat for questions. This is her first time at an Inverell forum from Woodstock near Nowra. Let's welcome the vibrant Zermaine. How are you? I think Dennis has said it all. I can probably go and sit down now. Um, I should point out it's, it's not me that found all this stuff. It was a research group. It was quite a lot of people. So I'm speaking for a lot of very um, committed people who've put a lot of time and a lot of work into this. Um, those people come from all around uh, three states. We've got people in the Northern Territory, Queensland, uh, Victoria, five states, pardon me, Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales, and a couple in South Australia. None of them are um, lawyers or legal people, which actually was an advantage because we didn't come at the research with uh, barriers, with prior knowledge. We came at it with an open mind and when the lawyers said, okay, start researching here, you go and research there and we come up with something and run to them and say, look at this, this, this fits in and they go, oh, no, it doesn't. So you'd go back and at a later date as more information accumulated, they'd start going, well, that does fit in because we had no barriers to it. We were just looking. So that's been, plus we were all doing it for free, which is a huge advantage in legal matters because uh, legal time is so expensive. Now, um, it's very hard to give you an idea of what's happened with the Queensland Constitution without you actually understanding the Australian Constitution. So I've got a couple of graphs there. If 
you find it a little bit hard to see, I'll certainly be running through them, but I've got um, handouts there for you that will carry those graphs and the explanations so you can take it home and understand it. Now, first of all, with the Australian Constitution, the way we're set up in Australia is that we have a constitution governing the Federation. That constitution is supported and protects common law and equity. Common law and equity go hand in hand because you don't need common law unless you own something. Common law is about someone taking something from you, whether it's a life or a product or a house or whatever, you, or money. So they go hand in hand. Um, so the Australian Constitution actually protects that on behalf of the people. When I turn my head, does that get a little bit blank? Yep. You still hear me? Okay, I've got to be careful then. So, so what we have here is, I'll go over this side. So what we have here is the Australian structure where the constitution has been set up in place, the Queen and the uh, Governor General as her representative are there to make sure the constitution is safeguarded in law and it all comes back to looking after us, the sovereign people of Australia. Now the thing is the sovereign people of Australia and the Queen are on the same level. The Queen isn't there to rule us, she's there to protect things for us. So that's our structure of laws in this country, or that's what it should be. Under that structure, you've got three elements of governance. You've got the judiciary, which is the High Court and the other federal courts. They are directly responsible to the Constitution. The High Court itself makes rules for the Constitution. If you ever read High Court cases, if they have a CLR in the title, that means that they are precedent cases. They are cases that when you read them, they actually change the, or make clarify the rules of the Constitution. Any other High Court case that doesn't have a CLR is using a CLR as its foundation. So uh, that was the first thing our researchers were taught. High Court cases first, CLRs in preference, and the third thing was that when you read a CLR case, you ignore the judges that didn't agree because it doesn't matter how eloquent what they said was and how it fits in, they still disagreed. So that was our three primary things. High court cases, CLR cases, judges that agreed. Now, having done that, um, we started researching. And what we were looking for was where the government could take away our rights. We were looking to find out where they had the powers and we couldn't find it. We went backwards and forwards to laws because when you read a court case, you must read the supporting documents. You must understand the judge's thought process. So you're sitting there with a the dictionary open and um, you're racing to the computer for another case and you've got the case you're reading. So you're running back at my ironing board, just had paper on it all the time, no ironing. Um, you're running backwards and forwards so that you understand the judge's thought process. We could not find where the government has the rights. In fact, just as a brief statement, what we've come to believe is that the, the government can only make laws over Crown or state land, over the land that they manage, not over private land. Um, now, so the second level that comes under the Constitution, sorry, I'll go over here, is the legislature, which is your actual parliament, your, your state parliaments and your federal parliament. In a state, with a state, the states usually have a constitution, that, so that slots in there, but on the federal scene, obviously, that's not there. So you have your uh, federal government, your state governments, your houses of representatives, senators, etc. They make the legislation. Then your executive is your governor general. He has final say. His uh, job is to, when they make a law here, they pass it to him. He's supposed to check it against the constitution to make sure nothing is removed from the constitution. Then if it's fine, he approves it and it becomes law, then goes down to the government departments to enforce, to govern, etc., etc. That's the proper structure, and that's all in place to make sure that the, the Constitution is supported for the people. Now, what happens in Queensland? What we found, and why we came about to start looking at this, is that uh, we're running these high court cases, and the constant, well, actually, sorry, we're going back to the early cases, we're running cases through the magistrates' courts into the Supreme Court on appeal. And we kept constantly getting comments from the judges such as, you're right, but you lose. And that didn't make sense. And it was all these variations, you know, uh, comments like, um, um, the laws in this state would make Hitler proud, but you lose. 
and this person has lost all rights to do anything with their land except walk on it, but you lose. And it didn't make sense. We couldn't work it out. And it was just by a chance thought process and something someone else said that one of the researchers, the head guy, went back to the Queensland Constitution because just on first reading of the Queensland Constitution, there's changes there and you can see it. And there was Harry, so Harry Gibbs, one of the justices, has stated that it has all the hallmarks of a republic, but it was fine. So you look at it and the oh, it's fine. So we went back further. Now, to remove all rights in a state, in a country like Australia where we have common law, etc., the first thing you have to do is get rid of this guy, the Governor General. Now, what we found was that Queensland had gone back, and this is a long-term process they've worked it over, at least 20 years, sorry, the process of changing the law started in about 1990-1991, but obviously there's been plans well before that. So what we found they'd done as they'd gone back to the 1867 Queensland Constitution, which was prior to Federation, it was when Queensland was an independent colony, and they had reframed it. But they reframe it, and it's an illegal expression, sine die, which means that they reframe it, but they don't bring it into law. They leave it sitting there for a date yet to be discussed. So they'd reframed the Queensland Constitution 1867, and they'd made a huge number of changes. Um, I'll just tell you exactly. They got it here. Carried it with me. They had made a huge number of changes. They had made 114 changes, 131 additions, and 116 deletions. And we had a comparison done of the document, and I've got that information there for anyone that's interested. Now, amongst all the additions were a huge number of additions regarding a parliamentary secretary. So what they had done is set into place in this Queensland 1867 constitution room for a larger role for that parliamentary secretary. So then we move forward to late January 1989. At the same time, in between that time, they also reframed a lot of other laws. But this was just done, sorry, we're missing you, Gennaro. This was, this was done over a period of time. They reframed, reframed all these other laws. Uh, now, come to 1998, and the leader of the National Party in Queensland placed a document on the, par of the table of parliament planning to move the Governor General into the role of parliamentary secretary. Now when you place a document on the table, if no one picks it up, no one questions it, no one does anything with it, after 12 months it automatically becomes law. So at the end of 12 months, with no independent member, no National Party, no Libs, no, not even the Communist Party, really, no one in Queensland that had a position in the parliament questioned this document. And it became law at the end of that time. On the 29th of January 1999, the, part, the governor of Queensland was moved into the role of parliamentary secretary, which means that he was no longer here. He was now working for the government. He was now a public servant. Now, on that same day, they also reprinted the Queensland Constitution 1867, which gave him this role. It was probably done first and then he moved into the role. So it was all set in place. Um, the problem that came about with that, uh, the really important thing, is that he didn't say to the Queen, I'm quitting and I'm moving into this role. He just moved into it and he kept the public seal. So every time they made a law from then on, he gets to still stamp the seal on behalf of the Queen. So you can call that treasonous if you like. I think it's damn treasonous. However, they then moved on. So they've got him where they want him. They've got the constitution in place. 